Hello, my name is Pastor Joel Silverman. Thank you for watching the Regeneration Church broadcast. It's my hope that through this message, you are encouraged and made stronger in Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. Preaching the last couple of weeks, on Jude, it's an end times message book. Uh, and I've been overwhelmed with this teaching. Uh, in fact, I, I usually do my sermons at Panera. And I uh, have a cup of tea and I sit in the corner there. And I started reading uh, chapter 24 of Matthew. And if you don't know what that is, that is the Jesus describing what the end times will be like. And I was almost sunk into grief. By the way, while I mention grief, Linda is teaching a class on losses in life. If you people in this church understand uh, that you have a profound teacher here, who's been blessed by God teaching this class. Uh, I can't tell you the blessing that everybody's getting out of her teaching just on the losses in life and the other teachings that are going on, the boundaries, the codependency, the 12-step addiction, and all the other classes that are going on. You're missing something that this church is really blessed in, bringing healing to the body of Christ. So I was so grieved as I was reading Jesus' statements about the end time that I said, who would be able to stand with all the things that are coming upon us in the last days? Who would ever stand? And the way I could imagine that is this way. Think of everything that you find valuable, that you secure yourself with, that's important to you, that you hold on to for your safety, security, and stability. Think of everything like that. What is it that gives me peace, joy, happiness, security? Is it your spouse, your grandchildren, your money, your things that you possess? What is it that you say, if I don't have this thing, how would I ever live? Well, anything that we secure, and I speak for myself, because uh, I've secured myself with a lot of things in life, <coughs> power, fame, fortune, and pleasure. I was very wealthy. I was a, a, a film editor, I worked with movie stars, and then I was broke. I went from wealth to food stamps in 10 years. If you don't think it can go, watch out. Watch out. Like this. So I've had many experiences in life, but nothing ever secures me, even my precious wife that I love so dearly, and this church that I love so dearly, and, and, and the people in the church that I weep for and pray for that I love so dearly, is not more important than thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when everything is said and done in life, Everything's going to fall away. Everything's going to fail. I'm reminded of Roland and Pam who lost their son a few months ago. He was a young man. I'm reminded of the conviction of Roland and Pam to be, even though they grieved the painful loss of their son, how they came and served and nurtured and did what they had to do because of the love of Jesus that's in their hearts. You see, love motivates you. Nothing else motivates people. Amen. Amen. That'll stick. Amen. So I call that 
Unconditional love motivates people. Conditional love has terms on it. It's like a contract. They used to teach law in school. It's like a contractual thing. It can come and go based on the contract. And everybody has their loopholes to get out of the deal. With Christ, there's no getting out of the deal. He loves you despite yourself. He's going to be with you despite yourself. No matter how many times you turn your back on Jesus, you could take a thousand steps and take one step back, and he's right there. You don't have to come back a thousand times like you do with people. Oh, you hurt me a hundred times? You'll have to repent a hundred times. There's no conditions on that love. So that grief consumed me so much. I said, honey, I can't preach this message. I, I'm not going down this road. Because who would stand in the last day? Who would stand? If we can't stand to the problems we're facing today, spouses, children, debts, the ba -ba 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 -ba, money, ba -ba. if we can't stand to the pains that we have today, how will we ever stand when they cut off your children's heads like they do in the East? When they cut off your wife's head? When your kids turn around and come against you in the last days and say, they're the Christians, kill them. I'm in the world. I'm happy. How would you like the loved ones that you sold your life into turn on you, spit at you, mock you. How would you like every penny that you've saved taken from you? Your house, your money, your 401k, your finances. There's nothing left. And if you don't get the chip in your head and your arm and whatever, you can't buy or do anything. If you don't want to know about the last days, don't read about Matthew 24. But my suggestion is, read it. Read it. That's my suggestion. Because 25 says, Matthew 25, he continues, he talks about the ten virgins. Five had oil, five didn't have oil. And they were just doing what they did. And when the Messiah came, the five without oil wanted the five with oil to give them oil. They said, no, we just have enough for ourselves. And then when they wanted to enter in, they were too late. The five that didn't have oil. He talks about the talents, the five talents, the two talents, the one talent. And my wife preached the message. Tarry, tarry, which means multiply with what God gives you. Multiply the gifts that God... You guys are loaded with gifts. Loaded. You see this little woman sitting up front here? Josephine? How many people know her? She is loaded with gifts. How many people ever say hello to her when she goes downstairs? Talented? I could bust at the gifts that her, Francia, Jeremy, Dwan, Michelle, all John, the gifts are exploding. You see the flowers? The flowers explode that Linda got to the gifts of what people have. Tremendous gifts of discernment and wisdom and Kathleen and Ronnie and Mary and every, every, just gifts, gifts, Melissa, every gifts. He says, don't hold back your gifts. Tarry, tarry, so until I come. And then he says in Matthew 25, he's going to separate the goats from the sheep. Ugh. The sheep are those who do the will of the Father. Come you who are blessed, it says in Matthew 25, 34. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Why? 
When you were thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When you were a stranger, you invited me in. When you were naked, you clothed me. And when you were in prison, you visited me. Go to Hope Day. It's a little bit of that. Don't stay home. It's only three hours, my God. <laughs> 11 to 2, you're not even cleaning up. Or you can sign up for the cleanup team. The goats are going into the eternal fire. And that's what I was reading in Matthew 24. The goats, the ones that don't serve God, are going into the eternal fire, prepared for the devils and his angels. They're going to hell. I said, I can't preach this message. I don't want to preach this message. Give me something nice. I don't have any idea. That was it. So my wife got sick on me. Of course, I gave it a cold. <laughs> Gee, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'll try to do something. She says, Friday, that's it. You got the message. I can't. I'm not the preaching. I said, all right, Lord. So I sat at Panera's all day. <laughs> all day I see the Panera's. I have my sardines. And I write. So my message for today, and I'm going to end, uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't like belaboring messages. I'm not going to say it's going to be short and it'll be long. I, I'm not that kind of, when I say it's short, it's going to be short. Contending for the faith, fighting, pressing in, contending, whatever you got to do, do. Everybody loves to go on mission trips and suffer. Why don't you just go to Hope Day for three hours? You don't have to suffer that much. <laughs> if you can't do Hope Day, how are you going to go on a missions trip? What is it, your ego? <laughs> the great I am? Oh, I went to Zimbabwe. <laughs> well, why don't you go to Bowling on the Green, wherever it is over here in Farmingdale, and you'll have a great missions trip. You could proclaim... I did missions. <laughs> PowerPoint number one. I ended my sermon, uh, or I began my sermon the last couple of weeks with Jude. Uh, it's only one chapter in Jude. But verse three says, My beloved, my whole concern was to write to you in regard of our common salvation. And I said, not at that it's a common salvation, but you have a common faith in Christ, a common Holy Spirit, a common uh, gifts, uh, common. It's common among us believers. But I found it necessary and was impelled the way I'm impelled today to preach to you. To write to you and urgently appeal and exhort you to contend for the faith. I told you what that word contend was. I'll get to that in a minute. That was once handed down to all the saints, the faith that is the sum of the Christian belief, which was delivered verbally to the holy people of God. Contend for the faith. Press in. I remember when my wife, uh, Carol, was, uh, her husband was leaving her and she told me that she contended. Her husband said to her, I can fight man if you were in love with a man, but you're in love with Jesus. I can't fight him. My wife's husband left her because of Jesus. She contended for the faith. She didn't press in. I contended for the faith when I lost everything in life and I made a decision. The more I became in love with Jesus, the more my ex-wife hated what I was becoming. But I knew 
that without Christ, nothing is worth anything in life. Wait till it's all said and done. Wait till you have your wealth, your riches and everything else, your new cars and everything else. It really don't matter. Because on the deathbed, when I worked in a nursing home for a while and ministered to elderly people, their last words was always about relationships. They didn't say, uh, you ought to, I told my son to take care of this and that and that. They said, my son hasn't come to see me. Relationships. Who cares how much you have? You're not taking a penny with you anyhow. Next PowerPoint. Contending is a wrestling match. Great struggle, surmounting difficulties or danger. Taking on, grappling with, dealing with, facing, arguing, professing. I want to share something with you. It's going to be so easy to take you off track. The world is numbing you to the world's ways. Next PowerPoint. What is faith? Faith is, I have to have belief, trust, reliance, loyalty, confidence in the Word of God, Jesus the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit. And then 2 Timothy says, when Paul says to Timothy, this is what we're trying to do with the people in this church and other pastors that try to do this with people in the church, evangelists and prophets. He says to them, in 2 Timothy, uh, Kathleen, read that out loud for me. Come here. 2 Timothy? Yeah. And the instructions which you have heard from me, along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. Qualified, competent, mature to teach others also. Not people that are flighty. Not people, oh, I woke up late today, I can't go to church. Oh, yeah, I've been too tired. Oh, my work, oh, my this, my that, my... I, I used to show up with 104 fever. Because I knew after I got to church, my fever would be less than when I got there. Amen. Amen. I just knew it. I've been doing this for 42 years. I just show up. <laughs> Why don't you just show up? It's amazing what happens when you show up. You'll never leave dragging your feet the way you drag them when you come in. You'll leave with a hop, skip, and a jump when you leave. Amen. Isn't that nice? Yes. So he wanted to deposit, and that's what we're trying to do. Find people faithful to deposit the end time message of Jesus Christ. That's what we want. Next PowerPoint. But 2 Timothy 3.1.5, I figured I'd go with this than Matthew 24. This is a little less. <laughs> But understand this, Paul says, or Timothy says, in the last days will come, will set in perilous times of great stress, trouble, hard to deal with, hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self. See the selfie pictures? Bing, 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 bing. Me, 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 me. Lovers of self, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> Utterly self-centered in the extreme. Tell me this is not the, the world today. Lovers of money and aroused with the inordinate greed desire for wealth. Oh, I got my bank account, I'm safe and secure. More and more. Yeah. You know, I don't care if it's a bagel or money. Once you eat it, you want more. Try eating one everything bagel. <laughs> or one pretzel. Or one potato chip. <laughs> Proud, arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing. 
Uh, blasphemous, insulting, contemptuous, scathing. Uh, th th they would just be insolent, doing everything that they can do for their own glory. They will be abusive, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. You know the disrespect that young kids have today for parents? Ungrateful, unholy, profane. They will be without natural human affection. Wow. Natural human affection. Do you know how many marriages my wife and I have counseled where I see natural affection that is callous and inhumane and cold? They just exist. Admitting of no truce or appeasement, they will be slanderous, false ac uh, accusers, troublemakers, temperate, and loose in moral and conduct, uncontrolled, fierce, haters of good. Next PowerPoint. It goes on. This is the light version, by the way. <laughs> I'm giving you the light version. That's because of our guest here. Light. I'm going light. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements. Fun, 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 fun. A large church, the pastor said, what is it that people want most? What did they say they wanted, honey? I want to have fun. I want to be happy. That's their biggest thing that they wanted. More than rather than lovers of God, for although they hold a form of piety, a form of religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. <laughs> their conduct relies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them. You know why you got to turn away from them? Because you'll become like them. You know, people get attracted to what's in them. So whatever vestiges are left in you from the world, you get attracted to. Oh, let me just t touch this a little bit. You know how hard it is to separate yourself from the world once you've been so attached to it, you know, Remember, in marriages, you've heard, all heard this. Leave, cleave, and weave. Leave your former ways of your singleness. Cleave mentally and physically to your wife. And then emotionally weave. Get integrated. Nobody t preaches on weaving. Weaving is the emotional connection. It's, it's the heart that weeps for each other. It's the heart that prays for each other. Do you know if you're single, you got to leave, cleave, and weave also? you got to leave the world. you got to cleave to the mental attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. And you got to weave emotionally to the love of Christ. Don't ever let your affections go on any person, place, or thing other than Jesus first. Jesus first. I do priorities in marriage counseling. Priorities. Do you know how many couples come to counseling and their spouse and God is not their priority in number one, two, and three? Never. That's why they're in counseling. If God and their spouse was their priority, they wouldn't be in marriage counseling. All right, I'm landing. That's it. Number, verse, uh, number seven, please. PowerPoint seven. I just put up a few scriptures on faith. Because you're not yet taking God seriously, Jesus said. The simple truth is, if you had a real kernel of faith, you can say to this mountain, move, and nothing will be, you won't be able to tackle. Nothing. Nothing. Mentally, physically, emotionally, nothing that you won't be able to tackle. The second one, Ephesians 2.8. For it is the grace of God, his unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. 
And this salvation is not of yourself or of your own doing. It comes through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Only through your faith. Ephesians, faith. Just believe. Just believe. When I had my heart attack going from one, from one to the other, one hospital to the other, and I couldn't breathe, I just said, all right, Lord, I believe. I'm ready. I'm coming home. My wife was screaming, don't go. I was screaming, get me out of here. Not because of my wife. <laughs> Listen, I've done enough in this world. I, there's nothing that attracts me in this world. Nothing. 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 <laughs> Seeing a Christian's eyes open up, to the Lord, that, that, I, I'm attracted by that. My son was just nominated Denver Businessman of the Year. I'm flying out Tuesday to sit with him. He said, Dad, come sit with me. And one of the leaders of the meeting, when I announced that, said, how come your husband's not happy? I said, I'm happy as long as he goes to heaven when he dies. Then I'll be thrilled. Who cares about all the titles we get? Man's titles are nothing. Well, my son, I go there and, I, and my son knows that there's nothing in this world. I've been training him since he was born. Don't ever get attached to anything. And he doesn't. He doesn't take this look at the great I am. He doesn't go down that road at all, Read, Thank the Lord but that he knows Jesus, that he knows Jesus, that he'll be with Jesus, is my only hope and prayer. I couldn't care if he had $50 million. It really, it really, who cares? Jesus, that he knows Jesus, that I could have eternity with him, that I could frolic with him. What do you want for your children? What do you want for your grandchildren? What do you want in your life? Do you want to be with them for eternity? Yeah. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by what? Faith. We have what? Peace. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom you have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope and the glory of God. By faith. I'll give you the last scripture, number eight, the PowerPoint eight, Galatians 2.20. I live, yet not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live in this life, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. I live, yet I no longer live. I live, yet I no longer live. This body don't live. This mind in this world don't live. I live, but I no longer live. It's Christ who lives in me. Christ who lives in me. I want to close with this. PowerPoint 11, everybody stand up. We ready? We have a confession of faith? Yep. All right, everybody. Now listen, if you want this confession of faith, just say it. If you don't want it, you know, it's okay. Are we all ready? Here we go. I confess victory over the challenges I face in life. I know that many have faced the same battles facing and victoriously won their fight. My battle isn't worse than the battles others have faced. So I boldly declare that I will be triumphant in my fight, just as they were triumphant in theirs. It is a fact, and our hard times will pass. And when they do, I will see the word of God bring me the victory that I declare and desire. It's not a matter of if I will win, but only a question of when I will win. In, Je in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. Father, I pray the Lord bless my precious brothers and sisters. The Lord make his face shine upon you. May the countenance of his glory overwhelm you. May he prepare a table before you in the midst of your enemies. 
May he bring you his rod and his staff that will comfort you and secure you. May you drink of the water where you'll never thirst again of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you come into the fullness of the richness of what God has for you. And may everyone here that hears this message be able to stand when the trials come against them because it's by faith they have been redeemed, stand steadfast, and restored. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every one. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you would like to hear more, we encourage you to visit our website at regenerationchurchny.com. So if you're ever in the area, please stop by. We'd love to have you at our Regeneration Church Sunday service or our tender-hearted message. Again, we thank you for watching, and may God richly bless you.